trout fishing in October, it's the hunt for the big fish. That's a hog there, bud. You're not gonna look at big number days. You're looking more for fish that you don't find anywhere else. The rivers that we normally fish, the big three, which I would call probably the Quechak, the Knack Knack, and the Kenai probably harbor some of the largest trout in the state. There it is. You got one? They've got these large lake systems. In those particular lakes, the fish have a natal home just like a steelhead would in the ocean. Look down the fish, Mike. Those fish have been feeding the entire fall, and you're in that hunt for a big fish. That's the time I like to be there. The later it is, the better I like it. I was at a point in life where I was ready for a change. Fishing was my passion. I wanted to try to share my passion and help others, and a fly shop seemed like a fun, logical way to go about doing that. Well, you been fishing? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Having the opportunity to help people get out and enjoy the outdoors and go fishing, right. seeing That's people right. succeed and their smiles when they come back in, <laughs> there's a lot to be said for how that makes a guy feel. The diameter should be greater than 60% of the diameter of the tip of your fly line. You know, I first met Tony just shortly after I bought the shop. So I never drop more than five pounds or five thousandths between steps. I do schools with Mike at the shop. We do educational programs for the clients in the shop. These are great. This is a really good book. It's kind of like an old Chris Batten style book. Everywhere to go, what to do. Mike and I look at the community as a whole in our local area, basically as an education think tank. Hand is loose, hand is loose. I changed my trajectory. Those four variables pinch from behind the line, drop it. There's a lot of times that you have stumbling blocks in your game and you don't understand that how something so small can trip you up that once you have somebody show you and actually explain it to you, you go, wow, I can't believe that really tripped me up. See how I'm pinching the line? Yeah. I'm actually shortening the line here. Tony is a very educated angler. He's very technical, very good fly tire, very good caster. He's a lot of fun to be around. I'm gonna pull that down. Nine feet, three, two, one, three. Mike, can you hand me a big fly over there? We both love educating, teaching, but also learning. You're always learning. The knowledge is always expanding. There's so many things that fishing offers you, and Alaska has it all, really. We have so much stuff here that hasn't been explored. And I got up to about 60 to 70 rivers, and I realized that I didn't have enough time in this lifetime to do them all. There he is. It just makes it a challenge, and that's the beauty of being located here is that I have access to a lot of territory and a lot of rivers. I've gotten to the point now in my life where I want to fish with people of like mind. When I'm fishing with Mike, we always seem to meet in the middle. It makes it enjoyable to hang out with a guy that speaks the same language. All the reports here of late is black is the fly to have, so I think we got plenty of black to choose from. Mike and I are going to be fishing on the Naknek River. It's in southwest Alaska. I've got three spay rods in this tube here. Getting ready for a trip like this, it's exciting. This is a variation of an Al Green. I'm usually tying flies last minute, trying to come up with something that just is gonna be the one. Instead of having a black body, we got a purple body. Mike and I are gonna be flying from Anchorage to King Salmon. Going out to see Bristol Bay, Alaska, it's super exciting to go on trips like this.
When we get off the plane, for some reason, I thought we had two dogs on the plane, but actually they were two seals that have been rehabilitated. I mean, I've seen lots of seals in my life in Alaska. I've never seen two seals in dog crates. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Banner Alaska Lane Park District. <laughs> We're going to go to a lodge that allows us access. Come October time frame, the majority of the outfitters are already done for the year. So going to a lodge is really your only real way of getting on the water to fish it. All right, you guys ready? Our guide, Kwechak, he's a local. He's born and raised here, so I'm really excited about spending some days on the river with him. I'm Kwechak Asplin, born and raised here in King Salmon, Alaska. Thank you, sir. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, now time for that big one, though. Time for the big one. All right, we're done screwing around. Mike and Tony, you know, they're well-experienced fishermen. So a lot of it's just laying the ground map for the Naknik. Kind of tell them, oh, there's a good drop here. It kind of deepens up here, just kind of sitting back and letting them do their thing. You know, we really relied on Quijack to just kind of get a feel for the river. There was a certain spot in the river that normally we would not have fished. We relied on Quijack, said, hey, we should probably try this because we knew the fish were moving further down. Tony took the inside edge and then I, coming in behind him, I started to wade out further. Once I got into where I was starting to swing that fly down into these little pocket buckets, that's when I stuck the first fish. Once I got into where I was starting to swing that fly down into these little pocket buckets that were laying out there, that's when I stuck the first fish. <laughs> oh, that's what we're looking for. Mike had the right angle on him. He was right set up perfectly for those fish. It's a nice fish, Mike. I mean, I kind of stayed moving out and on that line, targeting those colored water changes. What do you say? I'm gonna go 28. I was gonna say 27. In this particular situation, you really can't overweight because the fish were really far out. Nice. Good job. Pretty much the longest cast that you can make, and that was the area that you got the fly in the box, so to speak, and had some success. Yeah. I'm reading the water and I'm targeting areas where I think fish are gonna be laying. That's pretty exciting, especially when it pans out. Kind of did. Awesome, good job. When I'm targeting these fall rainbows, I tend to target them with flesh flies, with sculpins, and leech patterns. What I'm tying is kind of a variation of a Willie Nelson, which is a leechy pattern. We call these flies leeches. Up here, what we're really mimicking are lampreys. Catching a fish on your own pattern, it's pretty exciting to know that you created something that tricked them, faking them out, making them think that it's something it's really not. It's pretty hard to find much more gratification than knowing you were able to do that. When I tie these flies for the knack-knack, I don't want a really long tail past that hook. Those fish are known to come up from behind a lot. If I get that tail too long, and get short strikes and I miss. And there it is. The flies are an important thing, but how you fish the flies and where you fish them is as important as just having the right pattern. Someone told me years ago that every river in Alaska that goes to the ocean has lampreys. And mm -hmm. you grew up here, right? Oh yeah. You guys seen lots of lampreys, right? <laughs> yeah, crazy big ones. And this is basically a lamprey imitation. Yep. Have you ever seen them swim? Oh yeah, it's they, crazy. They go like this, they're yeah. like a little snake. Mm -hmm. 
So if we can get this fly to do that, I think that's the ticket. Yeah. You know, you got to put a little rod action on it. So the spot, it has a lot of brush behind us. And there's these big rocks. So every time you put your foot on it, your ankle wants to roll. I walked and fished the whole top spot, but down towards the bottom, setting up the right cast for that particular spot was crucially important. A little bit too far in. If I get out here, then I may not be able to get back. So I'm gonna be right out on that edge there, kind of weighing my odds here. I think I can reach it. The challenge is, is that you can't cast six times over that same spot and expect to pull the fish, especially if they're bad casts. So after two casts, I finally got the cast that I want. There we go, that's the only one. There he is. There's the fish I want. Woo! And that was exactly where Kwechak said that there should be a fish there. Yeah, a fish of a thousand casts for sure. That's a nice one. There we go. All righty. That's what we're talking about. That's a healthy fish. Yeah. Woo. This fish has a fairly prominent red stripe, a little different than a lot of the knack knack fish, which are really steelhead like. So it's probably been in the river for a while. It's colored up, it has some nice spots on the top, a really clean fish. So we went down to a spot we had fished a day before. We knew that there was fish the day before. We decided let's go back down and let's go with that again. There we go. There we go. Did you stick one? Yep. He's way down there. I knew there was one in there. I just knew it. It's almost into my back. And the beauty of the rainbows here is that they're so wild. They're strong, they're vibrant. Here we go. Nice little fatty. Yeah, it sure is. You think of this really adaptive animal. It almost lends a mystique to it. Trout fishing in Alaska, it's a magical experience for a trout fisherman. There we go. There it is. Got one, Mikey. You can catch more fish than you'd ever dream of. And you're gonna catch fish much bigger than you may dream of. You ready, Tone? Yeah. Nice! Woo! That's a hog there, bud. Look at that beauty. <laughs> oh my god. I'm telling you, this wild Alaskan rainbow is really a unique fish. Yeah. In the fact that it's a strong fighting outlier. I'm calling him 30. On the nose? Yeah, right on the nose. Beautiful. So you have knack knack fish, quechack fish. Upper Telaric, Lower Telaric, Copper River. They're all unique, but all the same. That's really the interesting thing about these trout. You have all this diversity within this one species. The biggest reason that I like to use a two-handed rod on a trip like this is we're fishing big water. It allows you to cover a lot more area, get into tighter positions. It makes you a little more effective. The brush stroke that you're trying to make is the brush stroke of the perfect cast. 
setting the cast up properly, executing the cast, getting the fly, the leader, to turn over to where you think the fish is gonna be with a fly that you've selected and tied. When that all comes together, it's satisfying, and it doesn't have to be the biggest fish. So that's the satisfying thing as an angler for me. Spade casting to me is a very artful, very enjoyable style of casting. I've had days where the fishing is pretty slow and I just find myself working on casting. One of the important things with Skagit casting or spay casting or whether it's Scandi or any of the hybrid forms is water tension. Most of the casts that we're doing on this river are sustained anchor casts. That means that the fly is dug in and we're creating load in the rod through water tension. One of the things is good casts, catch fish. You've got to be patient. You've got to present the fly properly. is one of a number of very small villages that are spread around Bristol Bay. And we have around 175 all year round residents. And one of the things I saw when I first came out to Bristol Bay was a real lack of Alaskans involved in the guide industry. Pretty much 100% of these kids started commercial fishing before they ever started sport fishing because that was how their family made their money. My whole family still commercial fishes. I, I grew up commercial fishing until I graduated high school. They weren't included in a huge faction of what was rapidly becoming a very popular sport fishing destination. Yes, and they actually, it's just, as you can see that there, see where my hands are here. Fish and Game and some of the government agencies have set parameters of what you need to be a guide in Alaska, but there was really no training. The kids that grew up here do get into sport fishing, but not necessarily fly fishing. I'm gonna keep my hands inside the box, watch. If somebody doesn't really show you how to use it, it's not as easy to become immediately effective with equipment. And so I started the Guide Academy to share the knowledge that I already had from my 20 plus years of guiding with a younger generation that I saw had huge potential for the sport fishing industry out in Bristol Bay. Nancy set me up with the right people and I got involved with what they call the Bristol Bay Guide Academy. The academy broke down the basics of fly fishing as well as customer service with guests. What really interests me about the whole concept of guiding is getting out of commercial fishing. I mean, it's a tough industry. The Guiding Academy has allowed more options for the youth like myself growing up here. One of the biggest benefits you get from having guides that are from the area is they have an intimate knowledge, not just of the area itself, but of the stories behind the area. All those stories go a long way towards enhancing an experience. <laughs> the neat thing about meeting young guys is that they remind me a lot of myself. I normally don't fish with a lot of guys that are my same age. I love the energy. That's more than anything else. Energy counts for a lot. So does enthusiasm. Day three was a challenge. It makes you start to wonder, like, man, what do we got to do here? Just can't believe there's no fish laying in here. After marginal success, we decided to go back to the other spot that we had fished earlier. There we go. There's a fish. Got him. 
That's a toady. Boy, he's thick, isn't he? He is huge. I pulled a nice fish out of this spot, but it just wasn't producing like it was. So I told Mike, I want you to try something new. I know it's not in your wheelhouse. We finally decided to go across the river and swing flies from out of the boat. And then we finally produced a fish out of there, which you, know, you don't see a lot of people swinging two-handed rods out of boats. It paid out for us. We did a little boat assist, and Mike caught one nice fish, and we called it a day. It was an awesome trip. <laughs> oh, my god. We caught some great, big, beautiful fish. There he is. Woo! The fish were here. The weather cooperated. We actually got to do what we wanted to do, and everything kind of came together. I want to be on the edge. I want to be on the new side of the new fishery that's starting to develop. But in Alaska, it's so vast, you'll never do it all. Even though your body gets older, the true mastery allows you to really become a craftsman in this endeavor that we call fly fishing. I was behind him, he spooked, now he's going away. You got one last shot, too short. The game gets better as you get older. This way of looking at the river has reinvigorated me to coming back to some of these fisheries that now I can approach them from a different perspective. We'll be back. We will be back.